Hey, what's up? Welcome back. This is another episode of Advent of Code with Ruby. We're going to be solving day two today. It's a really fun one. We're going to build a submarine that sort of dives a certain depth and then comes back up. Uh, yeah, and I had, a, I had a ton of fun with this one. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to come in here to my Advent of Code. I'm going to add day two as a directory. I'm going to add day two spec.rb as a spec. Require relative uh, dot dot slash day two submarine dot rb and uh, let's see r spec dot describe submarine do end all right so the the submarine here is or like the way that this works is you get a bunch of instructions so it's going to have forward and then a number and then down and then a number so you're going to kind of get like just a bunch of text that's passed in as instructions and then you want to sort of move your submarine along uh, and then ultimately at the end of part one here, you will find or you'll figure out like what is the um, your depth times your horizontal position to figure out what the answer is. So in this case, we're going to try to like take in this as our input and then move our submarine along and then spit out some number that is going to be the depth times the, f the like forward motion. So here, um, like I think what we want to do is we need to make methods for forward, down, and up, which are going to change like the depth and horizontal position. So what we could do is say describe um, down or something. Uh, and then it's supposed to like, um, it increases depth. So, so down, like when you're, when you're at the top of the surface of the water, your depth is zero. And then as you go down, your depth increases, right? As you get further and further from the surface. And so uh, in this case, I think we want like submarine is submarine dot new, submarine dot down, expect submarine dot, or I guess we wanna have like D is submarine dot depth. And then we wanna expect that the new depth is to be like be less than D or something. I don't know. We'll see if this works. Ah, crashed and burned. That's because I don't, I think we, we don't have, oh wait, we don't have the do ends lined up. Do and describe it, do, oh, this is not, <laughs> that should be an end. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, um, no such file. Okay, I think there is actually no such file now. Okay, submarine.rb, okay. Um, and then we can run the test again. All right, uninitialized constant submarine. All right, so let's add class submarine and then run it again. No method depth for submarine. So we'll say like def initialize with, um, I don't know what we're gonna take in right now, but we'll just say at depth is equal to zero and at horizontal or, well, we'll just keep it, keep it easy for now, depth. Okay, run the test. Undefined method down for submarine. Um, def down, and this is gonna say at depth plus equals one. Every, well, actually it's gonna take in some number. So down n, right? Cause it's in the problem statement, they're gonna give us some number. So like down eight. So we wanna go down, we're gonna increase the depth by that number. So here we wanna say down two or something. Like I guess, uh, we want to expect that the submarine depth is a specific number at the beginning. Um, so we'll say that we expect it to equal zero when we first start out. And then we want it to equal two after we move. All right, so that's working. And let's see, what else do we want to do here? All right, so now we need to also describe uh, like up, I guess. Um, up, it decreases depth. Um, so then we're going to expect that the depth is zero. Um, let's go down, let's go up two, and then we'll just expect that it's negative two. It shouldn't be above the surface, but whatever. Let's just like let it happen. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we'll say this. Okay, so uh, up is going to um, decrease the depth by that number. And we've got all of our tests passing now. Okay, so now we want to work on forward. So forward is going to change something else. So describe forward. So forward increases position. 
right? So forward is gonna increase our horizontal position. So forward X increases the horizontal position by X units. So let's say that our position starts at zero and then if we go forward two, then our position should equal two. It's very similar to down, but instead of depth, we wanna change position. So I'm gonna add a new instance variable here, position. And then we'll make this method def forward. N is gonna be at position uh, plus equals N. Oh gosh, we didn't see our test fail. We didn't watch it fail. Um, okay, we're still getting zero. Uh, is that because, oh no, this should be zero. All right, cool, got it. So now we are, we're moving in a forward motion. Now we've got depth, we've got position. And if we were to say like it uh, works for the example use case, um, then we could do something like this. We could say like uh, create a new submarine. And then we kind of want to like just take all these instructions and paste them in here. And instead of just doing that, we want to say submarine dot and then we want to expect submarine dot um, location or something. I don't know, like we ultimately want to figure out some, the location, yeah, like what is what do you get if you multiply your position by the final depth? I don't know, like we'll just call it location. Location doesn't really make sense, but whatever, two equal. Um, and then in this case, it produces 150. So we're gonna say that equals 150, run the test, watch it fail. There's no method location. So let's make a new method, def location. And this is gonna be at depth or yeah, depth times position. Watch it pass. Okay, so now everything is passing. That looks cool. Uh, and this is great. If we wanted to go through and like write out the code for each of these, uh, like, we could just copy and paste in and then do like a giant text transformation for all of these method calls, right? We're kind of banking on the fact that Ruby doesn't actually need parentheses after these. So like we're technically calling the forward method here, but we didn't actually have to go through and like wrap that all in parentheses. So it's kind of like a little bit like cheating, I guess maybe. Um, but there are some really cool tools that we can use um, inside of Ruby. And these are typically used for defining uh, domain specific languages or DSLs. And so what we can do, and you've seen this everywhere. In fact, we're using it right now. So we have rspec.describe do, and then inside of that, there's like this it method and another describe method and other stuff that you can just do like directly in line right here, right? And so like, let's let's make a, another method. It works with uh, DSL or something like that. Um, and we'll, we'll copy the same the same expectations, but instead of calling this with submarine dot, what we want to do is take in essentially what, like the same sort of format that we we're going to get as input. And what I want to do is make it so that we can call this by passing a block into the initialize method of submarine and then just kind of like calling all these methods inside there and then having it spit out the right answer. So wouldn't that be so cool if we could just make our own forward method and down and forward and up and whatever that you could call inside of a block? Well, we can. And the way this works is inside of our initialize method, what we can say is like if block given, meaning like if a block was actually passed in, then what we wanna do is um, instance eval for the block. So we're gonna call instance eval and pass in the block. And um, let's see. So then we should be able to run the same code and it just magically works. Like, isn't that insane? <laughs> so like this instance eval business right here is saying um, taken or like given that block of code, evaluate the methods in the context of this instance of the submarine. So instance eval, Super handy when you're writing a DSL. Also, we're gonna to try to use that for our sort of solution here. All right, so we've got a submarine, it's totally working. It works with this sort of like instance eval thing. Let's add our little uh, file helper at the bottom. We talked about this a little bit last time. Um, so if we're running the code from this file, what I wanna do is add an input here 
which is our actual like puzzle input. So I'm gonna copy and paste the puzzle input into this giant file. So there's a thousand commands here, a thousand different instructions. And what we want to do is um, we want to re read in those instructions and file.read input, or I guess like we want to do argv.first and um, that should give us our instructions. And then what we want to do is call submarine, submarine.new, do, and we want to like put the instructions like inside of there, right? So here we want to say like instructions or something. And then we want to pee out or like we want to like just put uh, submarine.location. And that should give us the answer. So if we run this right now though, so we want to say Ruby day two uh, submarine day two input, um, we just get zero back. And that's because when we do this, this is just a variable. We're just like referring to this variable above, right? That's not actually like plopping all of those instructions in line as part of that DSL. So we're gonna use another Ruby method called eval, which is sometimes called evil, uh, because a lot of people don't like to use this, especially not in production, it's super dangerous, but we get a cool answer back, 1480518, So that is the solution for, uh, yeah, for this <laughs> this first half. And that is the right answer and like whatever. I think it's super fun. Instance eval, eval, uh, creating your own DSL, moving your thing around, um, kind of fun. All right, part two. So based on your calculations, a planned course doesn't actually work like that. So instead of, um, instead of using having up and down change our depth, what this is gonna do is now it's gonna change our our aim. So there's like another variable called aim instead of depth uh, or like in addition to depth. And then what we what happens is like when you say up or down, that just changes your aim. And then that's kind of like the angle maybe that you're going sort of. And then forward goes like in that direction X times. So, um, all right. So what I did in my actual solution is I copied all of the submarine class and then created a new class called aiming submarine, but we're just gonna keep hacking around on here and I'm just gonna call this aim, I'm gonna add a new, actually, before we do that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. So we're gonna create a new class called aiming submarine, aiming submarine, and it's gonna have a an aim Actually, before we go there, let's add a, some some spec. So our spec describe aiming submarine. Um, it okay. So now we have to do like similar stuff, right? Describe down do end like it. Um, what does it do? Down like increases aim. I think right. Down increases your aim. Yep. So if we have a submarine, um, I think it's basically gonna be this. Instead of depth though, we're gonna get aim. And now if we run it, it fails because there is no aim method. So we wanna add that. We're gonna say at aim is equal to aim. And then down is gonna change aim. Up is gonna change aim and then forward is gonna change aim also, but for now, let's just call this a good start. Okay, undefined method aim. I thought we just, aim? Aim. Huh? Oh, we need this to be an aiming submarine. Uh, oh gosh. Okay, got zero, expected, oh wait, expected zero, but got nil. Oh, cause we're not initializing it. I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, like usually when I take stuff in as arguments, I pass down like that. All right, that works. Uh, All right, so down does that. Let's see, uh, up, decreases aim. And then we wanna say this is up and this should be like negative one or negative two. And that works fine. I already implemented that in practice. What I might do is just comment it out, watch the test fail, comment it back in and watch it fail again, comment the actual solution back in, watch it fail, or watch it pass, right? 
Okay, now what we need to do is describe uh, forward. So forward is going to be uh, increases um, position by aim times n or whatever, right? So then this is going to be uh, forward. And we kind of need to aim down a little bit, down two, and then we'll say forward like three. Um, in order, like otherwise, our aim is going to be zero. So we want our aim to be something so that when we go forward, we go in a direction. So right now we're going to aim down two, and then we're going to say forward three, and we expect that our our position is going to equal two times three. Uh, okay. And we'll just see what happens here. And undefined method forward for aiming submarine. Okay, let's comment this back in. We know that this is actually going to be times equals, no, it's going to be plus equals n times aim, I think. And okay, cool. So we've got passing tests. Everything is still passing because we just like totally copied and pasted the aiming sub or the submarine thing. Uh, it's supposed to make it so that, or I think the, the one of the reasons why they do the problem like this is so that you have practice refactoring and you realize like, oh, I made all these assumptions early on about the, the way that I was solving this and I wanna refactor it now. Um, okay, so I think we're pretty close to having an aiming, okay, so we've got an aiming submarine. Can we just change this aiming submarine and then run our input? We get back zero. Okay, so what is the problem there? Aiming submarine dot new instance eval down up position location is depth times position. I think that depth times position thing is still the same. Yep. Okay. So why did we get back zero? Hmm. So aiming submarine dot new eval instructions. Um, Let's drop a by bug in here, acquire by bug, just to sort of step through this stuff. Day two submarine.rb, day two input. Okay, so uh, next. Um, okay, so we have our instructions, and that's all of the instructions. Um, when you're in by bug, if you do L equals, that will bring you back so that it prints back out where the line is like smack in the middle. So now if we do like next, we have submarine.location. Why is it zero? Submarine.depth. Oh. Yeah, okay, so I did this wrong. So um, the location, all right, so we increase the position. Okay, so here we go, we, we messed this up. So increases your horizontal position by X units. So moving forward should actually increase our position by three. So we, this should actually just be three. Um, and then it should also increase our depth by um, aim times X. So this is, all right, so when we move forward, our position is increased by that and our depth is increased by N times that. All right, so then we expect the depth to be two times three. Uh, okay. All right, tests are passing. We come back over here, run the input again. All right, we get this giant number. It looks like this, one, two, eight. Okay, let's just search the page for it. All right, so that is the puzzle answer. This was super fun. I had tons of fun making a submarine and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, so this was uh, day two of the advent of code. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.